Okay, so what were the goals of KRAD when it got started? Well, obviously, we, we had to meet college students' need. There, that was the most important. Uh, they needed the ability to create more uh, improved UIs with more rich content and user interaction. Uh, we had to update some of our old technologies by this time, and I think around five years or so. So, you know, some technologies that really got out of date using struts and using OJB and so forth. So we wanted to update those old technologies. Uh, we wanted to expand the capabilities of uh, rapid creating screens and creating consistency to uh, approach. This, was, this wasn't necessarily a driving factor from college student, but, you know, as the years went through, lots of, you know, um, ideas for enhancements and so forth came through, so I wanted to take this opportunity. There was a lot of value if imp implementers, you know, granted this was just KFS implementers, had got a lot of value out of what we'd done with the maintenance lookup, lookup and inquiry. So we thought, let's expand this uh, so we have a consistent approach to developing our UIs and have this value across all of our UI. And like I said, there was numerous other improvements that had collected over the years that we wanted to try to, to work in there. So that was kind of a really high level what the goals of the KRAD system, our framework was. Uh, but the UI portion of the KNS was very unflexible and very hard to maintain how it had been built. It had really been built just to really target that administrative layout and you know, CRUD operation screens. A lot, yeah, a lot of it was based on the data model. So yeah, you yeah. provide a data model and it has some default configurations for right. screens. And there was a lot of argument on the KS side as to how much configuration do we do based on the data model versus just pumping out application. We decided pretty early on, even for our administrative apps, we didn't want to do that. We wanted to have a little more flexibility with, with what we were building out. Right. Point. So for KRAD, we decided to build out this uh, piece. It really wasn't a good candidate to ex extend out and try to build rich UIs with and so forth. Uh, and we researched uh, several tools of the time, you know, four years ago. Um, one of those was GWT, again, looking at that a little bit. Looked a lot at, at JSF, Java server faces. And uh, then the third option was Spring NBC. Uh, JSP and just jQuery. Um, so we did some evaluation at Lolo's and, and how we might build the, the UI piece of the KRAD. Um, and ultimately, the TRC, which makes our technical decisions, voted on option three. Um, one of the, the main reasons there is, you know, we're building a system from scratch, the UI framework, but we're not building the applications from scratch. Okay, they're going to have to convert to this and migrate to that. And so the TRC felt this was the most straightforward migration path, and they felt most, most comfortable with this technology because, you know, we already use JSPs and Spring NBC is a lot like struts, and um, Koi Koi's and others had already been using jQuery. So that's, that's kind of the, the tools that we uh, chose to move forward with KRED at that time. So the architecture of it, uh, again, the KNS was difficult to extend and for implementers to customize. Um, there was a lot of modifying JSP files directly that had to be maintained across upgrades. They, they would put little comments in the JSP, this is our modification. And, you know, so, you know, again, remember what's in the back of the development team's mind, upgrades, smooth upgrades, right? No people swap upgrades. Um, so we, we kind of went with this component architecture for the new UIF framework. And uh, I'm not going to get too technical with anything here this morning. Um, but, you know, essentially there's a Java class that provides the properties of the component. There's a template that does, that does the rendering, which initially was done with JSP, and then a spring definition that defines the usage of that component. So uh, the thought at that point, and this is something I think we'll talk about probably more this week, is that, you know, the KRAD UIF would provide components for common quality needs. Um, some, you know, component that was common to at least more than one 
Koi application. And maybe that get does 40 or so percent of the UI. And then the applications would do build the rest of the UI, either creating custom components of their own or just going down to the template like, level and filling up the rest of that. So um, we'll definitely talk a little bit more about that because that's that's something that we haven't really seen happen yet. And um, and there's some things we can do, I think, to help with that. I'm going to talk a little bit about in our moving forward. <laughs> okay. But that was kind of the initial thought of how the, the framework would work. Again, stop me if you have any questions or comments.